today's session of advanced public finance and taxation. In today's session, we will be discussing the taxation of insurance companies. The taxation of insurance companies. Insurance companies are part of the specialized business organizations uh, operating in Kenya and elsewhere. So we will be interested on how to determine the taxable income of an insurance company. Uh, basically here, we will be interested with uh, both the general activities of the insurance companies and the life businesses of the insurance company. Now, insurance companies are taxed like any other business, like any other business. There is no much difference, so they are taxed like any other business. This is granted by Section 19 of the Income Tax Act. So this is as per the uh, in Section 19 of the Income Tax Act. Now, according to this section, the insurance company carrying on the general business and also the life business activities will treat the life business activity as a separate business from the other general business activity. So that is important to note that an insurance company carrying out both the general businesses and the life business will treat the life business activity as a separate business from the other business activity. And therefore, the income from the life business activity that is the taxable income from the life business activity will be determined separately from the income of the general insurance business activities. So here it is important to note that uh, we will separate the two. That is the general insurance business and the life insurance business. So here we will start by looking at the general insurance business activities and see how we determine the taxable income from the general insurance business activity. Now, when we talk about the general insurance business activities, we are talking about the activities like uh, uh, the fire insurance, uh, we are talking about the marine insurance, we are talking about the car insurance. Uh, those are the kind of activities we are talking about under the general insurance activity. So these general insurance activities can be operated by resident companies or non-resident companies. Again here, I will specifically go to the resident insurance companies. Now, for less than insurance companies, the taxable income is arrived at by checking, among us other things, the following. The first one is the gross premiums from the general insurance policy. The gross premiums from the general insurance policy. Unless we will deduct any premiums refunded. So the general premiums from the general insurance policy, less any premiums refunded. Then, the second item to be included in the income is commissions. Commissions or expense allowance received or receivable, that is the commission ceded. So commission or expense allowance received or receivable, and in this case, it's the commission ceded. We will explain the meaning of the word commission ceded as we continue with our discussion. The third item is the investment income the investment income as a result of investing in the general insurance fund. So this one will also form part of the taxable income of an insurance company. Also, the insurance company, uh, the general insurance company can also receive bonus. So the bonus received will also form part of the income of the insurance company. The fifth item is the recoveries from reinsurance companies. So if there is any recoveries from the insurance company, this also forms part of the taxable income. The sixth item is reductions in provisions for an expired risk or an earned premiums, provided the provisions are alive that using the actuarial principles. So this reduction in the provisions for an expired risk or earned premiums is also considered to be part of the taxable income. Uh, we will be explaining the meaning of the reserve for the unexpired risk as we proceed with the discussion. So basically, those are the items that will form our, the taxable income of the insurance company. So one, we have looked at the gross premiums. 
-hmm. Number two, we have talked about the commissions. That is, is specifically the commission seeded. Number three, we have talked about the investment income as a result of investing in the general fund. Number four, we have looked at the bonus. Bonus forms part of the insurance income. Then fifth one is recoveries from the insurance companies. And then uh, number six is reduction in the premiums, in the provisions, so the reduction in the provisions for the unexpired risk or the unearned premiums. That basically forms the taxable income. Now, we have already said that uh, the taxation for the insurance company is like for any other business. So the, ta the insurance company is also allowed to deduct allowable expenses, to deduct allowable expenses. So which are these expenses? We will mention the expenses that are now allowable against the income of the insurance company. Now, these expenses that are allowable will include the claims admitted during the year, the claims admitted for the year under consideration. Now, uh, going to this format here, uh, uh, already the income is, as I have said, we have the format, the general format of compensation of the taxable income. Uh, I've taken, I've taken uh, just uh, uh, an insurance company called Bima Insurance Company Limited and the, the 2014 taxable income computation. Uh, as far as the incomes are concerned, uh, I have already mentioned that uh, the incomes basically will include the gross premium, then we have um, the commission seeded, that is the commission on the insurance seeded, we have the recoveries from the insurance claim, we have uh, the bonus, the bonus there, and we also have the reduction in unexpired risk, basically that, as I have mentioned, is what forms the income of an insurance company, the taxable income of an insurance company. Then, the allowable deductions, the allowable deductions uh, includes the claims admitted, claims admitted or payable for the year. So these claims are here, admitted or payable for the year. And then also we have uh, the commission paid. Commission which is paid is also uh, deducted. That is the agent's fees and the commission paid that would be deducted. We also have other allowable expenses, other allowable expenses, and in particular, we can talk about the management expenses. We can talk about, uh, you know, uh, salaries and wages. We can talk about land. We can talk about stationery. We can talk about capital allowances, ETC, just like for any other business. All the allowable expenses generally will also be deducted for an insurance company. Also to be deducted as an allowable expense is increase in profession for an expired risk. Increase in profession for an expired risk. That is also deductible. We will see the meaning of these terms as the increase in uh, the profession for an expired risk. Now, the increase in the profession for an expired risk, I mean, provided the profession is estimated using the actuary principles, just like we talked about uh, the reduction here. Then, finally, we also have reinsurance premiums paid. So if there are any reinsurance premiums paid, then the reinsurance premiums paid are also to be deducted. So generally, this part forms the allowable deductions against the uh, taxable income which is received by the insurance company. Claims payable for the year, commission accepted, reinsurance premiums paid, the management expenses, agent fees and commissions, the increase in profession of an expired risk, and all other allowable expenses. So then once we deduct that, we will have what is called the adjusted business income. We will have the adjusted business income just like for any other business, just like for any other business. Now once we get this adjusted business income, once we have this adjusted business income, we will bring in other sources of income other sources of income. And the insurance companies could engage in uh, rental activities where they earn rental income. So the rental income will be earned. They can engage in uh, investment activities where they earn non-qualifying dividends. We also have non-qualifying interest. That would be earned to our adjusted business income. And then we would have loyalties and patents also taxable. So that added to our adjusted business income 
will give us the taxable income for the business, the taxable income for the business. Remember, from our discussion of specified sources computation, from our discussion of specified sources computation, we said insurance companies are exempted from specified sources computation. They are exempted from specified sources computation. And therefore, therefore, even if the insurance company <coughs> makes a loss here, we have an adjusted business loss here, then this loss will be offset against incomes from other sources because the insurance company is not affected or is exempted from specified sources computation. So that is important for an insurance company. Now, once we determine the taxable income of the insurance company, we shall compute the tax on it. Now, the tax on that is just the normal corporation tax. And for resident companies, we've already said the corporation tax is, is 30%. And therefore, the tax liability will be 30% of the taxable income computed above there, just like for normal remittent companies, normal remittent companies. Now, we have used some terminologies in our explanation of uh, the income and the allowable deductions. Now, we will explain the meaning of some of those terminologies. Now, the first terminology will be commission on insurance seeded. Commission on insurance seeded or accepted. So we start with the commission on insurance seeded. Now, commission seeded is received from other insurance and reinsurance companies. Is insurance received from other insurance and reinsurance companies for acting as their agents for acting as their agent. So this commission seeded is the one which is received from other insurance and reinsurance companies for acting as their agents. And that's why we are putting it here as an income. So for instance, Bima Insurance Company acting as an agent of another insurance company. That insurance company pays Bima Reinsurance Company a commission. And this is the commission we are calling commission reinsurance seeded. So it is paid as a result of acting as their agents. Then commission accepted. We have commission accepted here. Commission accepted. Commission accepted on insurance is a payment. So in this case, it is a payment to other insurance and reinsurance companies for acting as agents. So them acting as agents. So BIMA Limited Insurance Company paying other insurance companies and other reinsurance companies for acting as their agent, for acting as their agent, and transferring insurance business which the company has accepted, and transferring insurance business which the company has accepted. This is what we are calling the commission accepted. So this is normally a payment. So a payment to other insurance and reinsurance companies for acting as their agents and transferring insurance business which the company has accepted. So then the third item or the second item terminology to explain is the reserve for the unexpired risk. The reserve for the unexpired risk or the unearned premiums. The reserve for the unexpired risk or the unearned premiums as you can see here, uh, the reduction the reserve for the unexpired risk. Now, this is maintained. It is maintained to cover expected occurrences. It is maintained to cover expected occurrences of risks. That is premiums received for contracts that have not yet matured. I mean that have not yet expired as at the year end. So this is maintained to cover expected occurrences of risks, that is, premiums received for contract that have not yet expired as at the year edge. It is a percentage of the net premiums. It is a percentage of the net premiums, premium income, mostly 50% for fire and 100% for marine insurance. 
So that is what we call the reserve or the unexpired risk. Then we have the bonus. The bonus in the reduction of premiums. Bonus in the reduction of premiums. A bonus is a share of profit. A bonus is a share of profit by policy holders. A share of profit by both policy holders. It's usually paid out of profits. Paid out of profits like in life policies. Like in life policies. There are various types of bonus that can be paid, but this can be mentioned too. So bonus can be paid in cash. Bonus can be paid in cash or bonus can be paid in reduction of the premiums. In reduction of the premiums. How? How is this done in reduction of premiums? It is telling the policyholders that instead of paying the insurance company their premiums and the policyholders to be paid bonus, they offset. So the amount which they were to be paid as premiums to be used to, I mean which they were to be paid as bonus, to be used to reduce the premiums that are receivable from the policyholders. So this is what we are calling now the bonus in reduction of the premium. So bonus can be paid in two forms, either in cash or a reduction of premiums. Then, what is this bonus in reduction of premiums? So bonus in reduction of premiums is a bonus which is not paid to the policyholders. So this is a bonus which is not paid to the policyholders, but it's used to reduce the premiums payable. It is used to reduce the premiums payable. So it is the one we are calling here the bonus in reduction of premiums. So in this case, it's being treated as an income because in, if this was not to happen, then the policyholders would have paid the premiums to the insurance company. Then the other item is the word premium. What is premium? Premium, this is the consideration. This is the consideration paid by the insured for the cover. It is the consideration paid by the insured for the cover. That is what we call the premium. So basically, those are the meaning of some specific terms that have been used here for purposes of determination of detectable income of an insurance company, for the purposes of the determination of the taxable income of the company. So basically, we have explained the commissions and we have the commission seeded, which is an income. We have also the commission pay, pay, payment of commission, commission accepted, that is an expense. Then we have the reserve for an expired risk, the reserve for the unexpired risk. We are looking at this from two points, the point of reduction. So where there is a reduction in the unexpired risk or the unearned premium, then that we are treating as an income. Where there is an increase, increase in the profession of the unexpired risk, that we are treating it as an allowable expense, as an allowable expense. Then we have also looked at uh, the meaning of the bonus in reduction of the premiums, and we have said generally the bonus is a payment out of profit, and it can be in cash, it can also be in the reduction of the premiums. Then the word premium, we have explained basically the consideration paid by the insured for the cover. Now, once we now have the format of the computation of the taxable income of an insurance company, and we have understood the terminologies that are used in the computation uh, of the taxable income, then we will use a specific illustration question on how to get the taxable income of an insurance company. In this specific question, we will use the question of June 2011, question number three. And we will read through the question. Motor General Insurance Company Limited provided the following details with respect to the financial year ended that 1st December 2010. Bad debts, 468,000. Investment income, 960,000. Reserve for an expired risk at the beginning of the year, 948,600. Commission on reinsurance accepted, 3,484,900 shillings. Claims outstanding at the beginning of the year, 
first in US twenty ten six seventy six thousand two hundred. Gross premiums. Gross premiums twenty four million six hundred and forty eight thousand six hundred. Claims paid four million eight hundred and twenty six thousand. Claims outstanding on that first December twenty ten one million eight hundred and fifty thousand. Claims recovered on insurance five forty five thousand. 700 legal expenses relating to claims 376800 commission on reinsurance cdet 728900 agency fees 1296400 fallen exchange losses 392700 dividends from life insurance fund 216400 Management fees, one million eight hundred and four thousand six hundred. Bonus utilized to the reduction of premiums, three seventy one thousand seven hundred. Royalties from patent rights. Royalties from patent rights, one million four hundred and sixty thousand. Repairs of rented premises, two sixty four thousand eight hundred. Trappering expenses, 89,400. Purchase of motor vehicle, 800,000. Reinsurance premiums paid, 724,800. Returned premiums, 1,314,600. Length of income, 560,000. So those are the figures extracted for that year. Now we have additional information of the same. One is agency fees of shilling 16,400 relating to life insurance fund. Agency fees shilling 16,400 relates to life insurance fund. Two, management fees include shilling 24,200 which relates to tax consultants. Three, repair of rented premises include shilling 14,800 for purchase of furniture. Required in that question is a statement of adjusted taxable profit or a loss for Motor General Insurance Company Limited for that year. So we will go through again the questions, picking the items of income and also picking the items of expenditure. For the items of expenditure, we will indicate whether the expenditure is allowable or not allowable. Remember, we have already gone through the list of allowable and non-allowable deductions. This list of allowable and non-allowable deductions applies to, it applies to all types of businesses. So in this question, we will identify the allowable and non-allowable expenses. So the first item in this figure are the body debts. The body debts are allowable, as we saw in our list of allowable expenses. The investment income, that is a taxable income. The reserve for an expired risk. We will monitor the reserve for an expired risk, and this is given us at the beginning of the year. We will monitor at the end of the year to see whether we have a reduction of the whole amount or we have uh, an increase of this reserve. But what we can see from the question is that at the end of the year, we don't have any reserve for the unexpired risk, meaning the whole amount of 948,600 is a reduction in the reserve for the unexpired risk, and therefore will be treated as an income. Because as we can see here, the reduction in the unexpired risk is an income. Then we have the commission on reinsurance accepted. That is an expense which is allowable. Then we have claims outstanding at the beginning of the year. And we have, we have to track the claims. And again, so that you can know the net figure of the claims that is payable. We need to know the net figure of the claims that is payable. So the claims, all of them will do a common working for the claims to know the amount of the claim that have been paid and treat them as an expense. Then we have claims recovered on insurance. That is also a taxable income. Then we have legal expenses relating to the claim. That is an allowable expense. Commission on reinsurance ceded. That is an income, as you can see in our general format. 
so that it will be an income. Agency fees is an allowable expense. Uh, foreign exchange losses. Foreign exchange losses. Again, here, remember, the foreign exchange losses are allowable. They are allowable if they have been realized, if they have been realized. But in this case, it is silent. We don't know whether the foreign exchange losses have been realized or not. So in the absence of that, we'll just treat it as not allowable. We'll just treat it as, uh, I mean, we'll just treat it as an allowable. We'll assume that the foreign exchange loss is realized and treat it as an allowable expense. Then we have dividends from the life insurance fund. This, remember, is the part of um, uh, the income which is being received by most of the general insurance companies. And generally, the dividends from the life insurance fund are exempt from taxation. They are exempt from taxation, uh, remembering our discussion of the taxation of investment income. We looked at the dividends fully exempted from taxation. And among us them were the dividends received by an insurance company from the general from the life fund. From the life fund, we said they are exempt from taxation. Then we have the management fees. The management fees is just an allowable expense. We have bonus utilized in the reduction of premium. That is an income, as we can see from our general format here. Then we have royalties from patent rights. Royalties are a taxable business income. So these ones will be taxed. Then we have the repair of rented premises. That is allowable against the rental income. So here we can use the repairs against the rental income so that we can get the net income from the rental activity. And that will be taxed under the categories of other incomes. Here we have the rental income there. Then we have um, the structuring expenses. That's common business expense, which is allowable. We have purchase of motor vehicle. The purchase of motor vehicle is capital expenditure, and uh, we generally say capital expenditure is not an allowable expense. Remember our list of non-allowable deductions, capital expenditure on the purchase of fixed assets is not allowable, and in this case the purchase of motor vehicle is not allowable. Instead, the motor vehicle will be granted wear and tea allowance in class 4. Then we have the reinsurance premiums paid, that is an allowable expense. We have returned premiums that we shall use for adjusting our premiums. And then we have the rental income to be reported under other incomes. Then in the additional information, we have the agency fees of 16,400 relating to live insurance fund. There we shall adjust. Remember again, we said we shall treat the life activity, the live business activity different from the general life, I mean from the general insurance business. So we shall adjust the agency fees by deducting the 16,400 from the total agency fees. Then number two, the management fees includes 24,200, uh, which relates to tax consultancy. Now, tax consultancy, the expenses on tax consultancy are allowable, are allowable. So even this management, this tax consultancy fee is going to be around. Then number three, we have repairs of rented premises, which we are told includes 14,800 for purchase of furniture. Now, the purchase of furniture is capital expenditure, and it will qualify for wear and tea allowance in class four. Wear and tea allowance in class four. So we shall adjust the repairs uh, by deducting the 14,800, which we shall give the wear and tea allowance in class four at the rate of 12.5%. So having understood that, then, we will put down the solution. <laughs>